how did you get into comedy and do you feel that that humor is an effective uh, coping mechanism and something that can help you and other people going through a hard, hardship? You know, comedy is, um, it is a wonderful way to distract yourself. It's a creative way and a good way to get your mind into a different, it was just a natural fit. So yes, having comedy, being able to look at things through a funny lens and have a different perspective on it takes the hurt and pain out of some of the most devastating things you have to go through because you can go through those emotions of finding yourself to where you can get that release and you can do it by yes you're gonna cry you're gonna be frustrated but then if you could take a step back and say but you know what this really isn't that bad there's actually some funny things that come out of it Diva Danielle Williams. I don't know about you guys but let me tell you I had Vaseline Crisco baby oil WD-40, all kind of stuff on me just to get into these spanks tonight, okay? It was a mess. See, I always tell people that um, my life was really good because it was and I enjoy my life I enjoy my life now but 2018 was my year and I would tell people that all the time I say 2018 is my year this was in 2017 I was like I'm so prepared for 2018 you just do not know because in 2018 I was going to be graduating with my degree in journalism and the thing is I had always worked in journalism radio television but I never went to college for it I won a radio contest in 2000 and I turned it into a career I didn't go to school until 2013 and so 2018 was when I was graduating because I was working two jobs at the time I was on television in the morning doing a live show and then in the afternoon I was on the radio at iHeartRadio doing traffic reporting and then in the evening, I was going to school. So in 2018, everything was kind of wrapping up and I was about to graduate. So that was what I was looking forward to in 2017, was making that new year coming into 2018. Prior to that, I've always taken care of myself, always worked out, always ate well. So I just amped it up a little bit more because my goal was graduate, have my birthday in May, go to Miami and I wanted to be in a bikini so my goal was to amp up my exercise change my diet a little bit and I did and I felt amazing so May of 2018 I graduated with my journalism degree I had my birthday then I went to Miami and I celebrated in June came back was feeling good just kept working out kept living my good life and then um, all of a sudden I slowly started losing weight but see I thought my metabolism had revved up and finally I was losing weight and I've never been a skinny girl. I've always been super fit and healthy. So I was excited that I was losing weight. Then little by little my back started hurting and I couldn't figure out why and I thought, oh, maybe because I'm working out a little bit more and my body is just, you know, finally saying enough is enough and maybe I need to rest. So I did rest a little bit and then, nope, kept losing more weight. Back started intensifying in the pain. Then I went to my dentist. And my dentist said, well, you know, a few months ago we did that procedure and it looks like your gums are not healing like they should be. He goes, I can tell from your gums that internally you're sick. You're a little unhealthy. He goes, have you been sick? And I said, no, I haven't been sick. I've been working out. I'm feeling good. I said, my back hurts. I've been losing some weight, but I ain't been sick. He said, I want you to go to the doctor because I can tell from your gums something is not right. Your body inside is telling me that something's off. Went to my doctor and he said, well, why are you losing all this weight? Let's just do a MRI on your spine. And at that point, I had dropped a lot of weight. I'll never forget this day, November 21st of 2018. My doctor says, well, I know what the problem is. At 94 pounds I was, you have stage four lung cancer. It's in your lower spine, it's in your pelvis, and it's in your shoulder. What? I had never smoked, I don't drink alcohol, I don't drink coffee, I've ate super clean. So a part of me felt like my body had betrayed me. But that is what happened. And then from there it was, I was on a mission to not only just understand this cancer, wrap my head around it, but embrace it and figure out a way to make it my own because now it was a part of me. I always tell people, my life is like a puzzle 
I am the puzzle, but this was definitely a piece I did not understand, I didn't see coming, but this piece had invaded this puzzle and I had to figure out why and figure out what I can do going forward to make sure that, um, because I was the sickest I'd ever been in my life, that I was still gonna be here because mentally and physically, I didn't feel like it was time for me to go. I didn't feel like that I was going to die and so I never thought about dying. I always thought about the positive side of it. What can I do and how can I make this better for me going forward? Because I knew I was doing everything right. So for me as a non-smoker, someone who worked out and ate healthy to get stage for lung cancer, there had to be a reason behind it. And so that was sort of my mission. I needed to find out what was the reason. Well, I got to Ironwood um, after I had made my diagnosis known. So I, at the time, I was on television and people would see me dropping weight and they were trying to figure out why I was getting so thin. And they all thought I had an eating disorder. So when I made the announcement on television that um, I had the cancer, it was a little overwhelming and all that. But then my television career pretty much came to an end. I didn't have my job anymore because I had to start intensive treatment and life had t totally changed. So 30 days of intense radiation. So Dr. Kukanor, who I absolutely love, was my doctor. My primary care doctor um, took and said, I have a friend who I want you to go see. And it was Dr. Kukanor. And he right away just wrapped his head and everything in him around my diagnosis. And he took care of me. He made it, you know, his mission like he does with all his patients. And so I had intense 30 days, every day for 30 days. Now, understand it was the day before Thanksgiving I found out. So December 1st, I started radiation on my lower spine and my pelvis every day for 30 days. And so then the new year comes ringing in for 2019 and January, I had biopsies done on my lungs to see if I had a mutation so I can see what type of chemo I was gonna receive and I didn't have a mutation. So unfortunately, I had to get all of the, what I like to call the buffet of chemo. I was given the buffet of chemo because I had five different bags of medical solution. I called it my toxic cocktail. Now I'm not someone who drinks alcohol, but I had a lot of toxic cocktails. And I didn't have my port yet, so I had to get all of my you know, medicine administered through my veins. So it's constantly being stuck with needles, and I was a regular here at Ironwood, but I didn't let it get the best of me. I always embraced it. You know, once I heard myself say I have stage four lung cancer, in the very beginning, yes, that first, you know, couple of days, it was like tears, telling family and friends. But then I said, you know what? I have to move forward. And I'm a strong believer of a strong mental mindset. And I said, you know, I gotta wrap my head around this and I gotta figure out what to do. So all of this was new to me because I had never been this sick before. I've never even had a broken bone. So. It was just like overwhelming, but I embraced it because one, I tried to look at the positive. So the positive was I got to see these amazing people in their element, making people well, doing their job with a smile on their face. So I met wonderful nurses like Sarah. I you know, was being taken care of by Dr. Kukanor. And everybody was so nice to me when I came here. So I am, you know, just wrapped myself around all that goodness. And every time I would come, I would just, not look at it as, oh, I gotta get this, I gotta get that. I would look at it as, ooh, what am I getting today? Because you know, sometimes they give you these drinks, these drinks that look like shakes. Shakes. Nasty as I don't know what, but you know, they're good for your body because they're giving the doctors what they need. So I'd be like, what am I getting today? And then they'd be so cute about it because once you play along and they play along with you, it doesn't become as daunting. So they'd be like, you want mocha, you want berry, or you want vanilla? And so I was like, ooh, I love vanilla. So I would get vanilla shake and I made fun of every experience and every visit I had coming here. And so it was wonderful. And um, I had the support of family and friends and then I made friends while I was here. And I would do my hair and I would do my makeup and different things you know, along the way just to make myself feel good and have a sense of normalcy. But each time I would celebrate every little milestone. So if it was like, you know, we didn't see this on the scan and we saw that you know, two weeks ago, so it's, it's getting better. I would celebrate it. I would take selfies with the nurses and the doctors and make my journey their journey. So whenever I'd come in, they'd be like, oh, she's here, Diva's here, you know, and it was fun. So that's what I did and that's how my experience was when I came to Ironwood and that's how I got to Ironwood Cancer Center and I've been here ever since and it's been over three years and I'm still coming. How did you get into comedy and do you feel that 
that humor is an effective uh, coping mechanism and something that can help you and other people going through a hard, hardship? You know, comedy is, um, it is a wonderful way to distract yourself. It's a creative way and a good way to get your mind into a different space. And for me, when I was first starting out my radio career in California, after I won the radio contest, my job as a morning show co-host was to, because I was living in California in a small town of Salinas, and Monterey is right next to Salinas, so on Thursdays, I would go down to Monterey to the comedy club, and I would warm up the audience, bring up the comedians, and then Friday morning, the comedian, the headliner, would be on our morning show, and he would encourage people, we'd do jokes with him, have fun with him in, in the um, studio, and he would encourage people to come see him perform. So I got to know a lot of the comedians and I would talk to them and they were like, you should do comedy. And I was like, I don't know. And then the one comedian gave me the best advice. He says, don't do comedy until you feel like you have something to say. Like you feel like you can write stories, you can write jokes, you can have a perspective and an opinion and you can voice it in a way that's clever, funny, but also gives people something to think about while being humorous. So I took that advice, and so I didn't do comedy until years later. It was about 2013, 2014, and I went to an open mic. Had the best time ever, and I said, now I feel like I have something to say. Started networking with other comedians locally here, and they gave me some points of advice. And I just started slowly writing, finding my voice, my niche, getting up on stage. And in the beginning, it's crazy. You're all over the place. You don't know. But then you find your voice, you create your rhythm, and you find your sense of what you want to talk about. So in the beginning, I had certain things that I talked about, but then I got cancer. And so as I was healing, I found, you know, just through my personality and the way I like to express things and the way I look at things, my cancer became a new position for my comedy. So it's an element that I've been able to incorporate into my comedy. And for me, just because I'm a very outgoing, easy breezy going person, it was just a natural fit. So yes, having comedy, being able to look at things through a funny lens and have a different perspective on it, takes the hurt and pain out of some of the most devastating things you have to go through. Because you can go through those emotions of finding yourself to where you can get that release. And you can do it by, yes, you're gonna cry, you're gonna be frustrated. But then if you could take a step back and say, but you know what? This really isn't that bad. There's actually some funny things that come out of it. Like I did a whole video on constipation because that's the one thing that nobody ever talks about, especially because everybody at some point in their life knows someone who goes through cancer and unfortunately has known someone who's passed away from cancer. Those medications will back you up and it is no joke. So I found it to be quite humorous and so I talked about it and people were like, nobody ever talks about that. There was a breath of fresh air because then when I had friends who unfortunately had somebody in their life get cancer, they knew that they were gonna have to address the constipation. So I gave them things that helped me get through it and it worked for them. So having a sense of humor opens up doors of communication. You can look at things differently and ultimately something so daunting as cancer really doesn't stand a chance when you have a sense of humor. You pretty much squash it at that point.